hey, we found thousands of exoplanets out there, but most of them are total nightmares, either scorched to a crisp or frozen solid. If we want to find a world where life actually stands a chance, we have to look for one specific sweet spot in space, the habitable zone. It's better known as the Goldilocks zone because for life to thrive, the conditions can't be too hot or too cold. They have to be just right. The Goldilocks zone is the precise distance from a star where the temperature is exactly right for liquid water to pool on a planet's surface. This is the ultimate holy grail for astronomers, because as far as we know, where there's liquid water, there's a chance for life. But here's the thing. The habitable zone isn't a fixed distance. It's a moving target that depends entirely on the fire of the host star. Think of a star like a campfire. If you're sitting next to a massive roaring bonfire, a hot blue star, you have to stand way back to avoid getting burned. The habitable zone for those stars is pushed far out into space. But if you're huddled around a tiny, dim, glowing ember, a small red dwarf, you have to get incredibly close just to stay warm. This creates a weird paradox. Small red dwarfs are the most common stars in the galaxy, and their habitable zones are very close. This makes the planets easier to find, but it also means those planets are often tidally locked. One side of the planet is trapped in eternal scorching daylight, while the other side is stuck in a permanent frozen night. And being in the Goldilocks zone is just the first step. To actually be habitable, a planet needs a shield, an atmosphere. Take a look at our own neighborhood. Venus, Earth, and Mars are all technically in or near the sun's habitable zone. But Venus has an atmosphere so thick it's a 900 degree pressure cooker, and Mars has an atmosphere so thin that any water would instantly boil away or freeze solid. Earth is the only one with the perfect atmospheric blanket to keep that liquid water stable. So when we find a planet in the Goldilocks zone, we aren't just finding a rock, we're finding a world that has won the cosmic lottery. We are looking at a place where the temperature, the star, and the distance have all aligned to create a second Earth. So the next time you look at the stars, remember, there are billions of Goldilocks worlds out there just waiting for us to see if anyone is home. Pretty wild, right?